It works! It's alive! It's alive! Hello guys and welcome in today's episode. I'm Alex and today I'm overly excited to present to you one option that you have on the table if your budget is of around $1,000 for a brand new PC that you're looking to build by yourself. something wrong here let's go over quickly about the things that are really important when you are considering to build a pc right now because definitely this is an endeavor that you're not going to go over in the next few years or at least i don't think that in average people are going to change out that pc for the next three years so it's definitely important for you to have access to the latest technology right now and of course to have access to a great ability further down the line when you are looking to switch out components in this pc I have went over careful consideration of the PC components that I have right here. I'll tell you exactly on what I did opt to cheap out right now and what is actually very important for me right now when I'm gonna build this PC because I'm gonna treat this PC as basically building it for my own use and I am looking for some very key important aspects when I do so. And in this corner we have the inexpensive the Sapphire Nitro. So at the core of this build right here we have this AMD Ryzen 5 7600X, a 7000 series processor from AMD, which offers great performance for not a lot of money. So this definitely makes for a good CPU to start out with. You can see this box, it's rather thin. And that is because Ryzen with the Ryzen 5 series right here, they don't include any sort of cooling solution. But threat not, you can definitely find AM4 coolers that are compatible with the B650 and the AM5 platform of CPUs which go quite for cheap on the internet if you scour on Amazon you can find anywhere in between 25 to 100 and something euros or dollars but definitely you don't have to splurge at the beginning so for me in my case definitely I have went with something that I had available to me and I valued it around $30 and this is basically the Ryzen 9 3900X cooler that I had in the box for that AM4 processor and uh, well this cooling solution is more than adequate for my Ryzen 5 of the AM5 platform for not a lot of money. Another thing that I should definitely mention about the CPU is that this has integrated graphics that I'm hoping later on in the build where we are going to test this PC that I'm gonna make it work with the GPU of choice which is a very old GPU by now but it's definitely very cheap to get but it will get you started I don't know gaming at 1080p probably medium settings with all the AAA games right now of course no ray tracing none of that posh things but hey uh, it will get you started to get your foot in the door and later on definitely you can upgrade the GPU because as you know that is a very expensive part of the build and with this B650 motherboard that I have from MSI right here, it offers great flexibility in terms of upgradability later on down the road when you do decide to upgrade the CPU and maybe you do decide to upgrade your RAM as well. So definitely these are the best two things that I could consider when choosing a motherboard. Not only that, but you get something that I definitely do consider that you should get in standard with any motherboard right now and that is wireless. Yeah, you definitely get wireless capability with this B650 from MSI. So definitely MSI, in my opinion anyway, in the past few years, got up to a brand that offers a lot of flexibility. Uh, well, I should say a lot of performance for not that a lot of money. Moving on next, we have this kit of DDR5 RAM right here. This is 32 gigs at uh, 5200 megahertz. So it is very fast RAM that is both supported by that Ryzen 5 processor and both by the B650 motherboard behind me. Moving on next, I've paired this NVMe SSD. This is a one terabyte PCIe Gen 4 from Kingston. Uh, that should go quite well with this build and should allow us to have a lot of performance on the table straight out the gate so I don't have any sort of issues and this is pretty much straightforward. The motherboard supports it. We're just gonna flop it in, put windows on it and then get some games installed and see exactly how the PC runs. Bro, just get on and show us that GPU, come on. Where's, Where's the, the GPU? GPU? Where's, Where's the, the GPU? GPU? What, what that? that yeah, about that GPU, as I've mentioned before, I definitely cheaped out a little bit this time around because this is definitely one of those items that I have said before can get overly expensive very quickly. And in this corner, we have the Sapphire Nitro R9380. What? Yeah, I'm the sort of guy that actually chose to go with this GPU in that $1,000 bill PC right there. And I'm hoping that definitely it will not disappoint. As you can see, it is unbuilt, we're gonna build it, we're gonna have the same surprise together! Yeah, we have a Sapphire Nitro R9380, this is a very inexpensive 
GPU right now and most of you guys would say I'm out of my mind and this is absolutely garbage in 2023. It is of course a four gigabytes card. This is a DDR5 platform GPU. But before you're gonna say that I'm out of my mind, just listen to my train of thought right here. I'm looking for upgradeability down the road and I'm looking for instant access to the brand new technology right now. And we get both of these things with that CPU and that motherboard and that RAM configuration behind me. The rest of the things right there can actually be upgraded, same as this one right here. What I wasn't actually looking forward is to build a PC that has to swap out the motherboard later on down the road when you want to buy the newest and greatest. And you definitely don't have to do that right now because this is the brand new platform that should be around for the next five years at least with AMD so you're gonna have access to better CPUs uh, RAM of kits uh, kits of RAM I should say and better GPUs all together with this motherboard right here without having to swap out parts and that is very important to me so this this is a nice to have item but uh, if you know you have other priorities this is a good starter to go with oh where oh where would it be without a PSU for this PC right here this is the Seasonic Connect 750 watts power supply. It is definitely overkill for the PC that we have right here. But if you scour on Amazon, you can find it for as low as $125-ish brand new. So those are, I think, deals. But definitely, this is one PSU that I trust with all of the components of any PC that I build. Uh, you can definitely go a lot cheaper and find 600 watts or so power supplies that are anywhere in between $30 to $50 but I wouldn't really recommend you buying those uh, PSUs. First of all, they are not modular, so you're gonna have a ton of headache running all the wires around. And secondly, but are you really gonna sacrifice your PC to a PSU that's being made in China by the lowest paid worker in the highest workload possible factory? But hey, your money, your choices, right? But still, be smart about things. And the star of the show is that box right there, that's definitely something that I cheaped out a lot. I bought it for around 25 bucks. I don't even know what it is, Aquarius something. All I know is that it supports both ATX and uh, micro ATX boards in there. And this being an ATX board, it should definitely fit in there. And I'm hoping that that PSU, which is modular, is going to give me less headache when I put it all together. All the components will be listed down in the box below. So do feel free to check it out. And uh, I would like to actually ask you guys one thing. Please leave your comments down below with all the things that you consider to be right or wrong about this build and how maybe you would have done things differently. So much yapping, right? Let's carry on and build the thing, goddamn, shall we? All right, so let's start it off with a PC case right here. It isn't actually all that much to look at, but for the amount of money that we paid, I'm actually pretty happy with what I chose right here. We get, if you can believe it or not, a magnetic screen, a dust screen of sorts. So that's pretty nice to see that we have for this money included with this case right here. It's actually fairly light and you can move it around quite a bit. I'm surprised to see that they actually have this with a tempered glass side, which is uh, something wow for this price point. So this is it right here. Behind door number one, you have, first of all, a basement, I should say basement for your PSU. So that's fairly nice to see in this day and age. Uh, yeah, pretty spacey in there. So that's pretty nice to see you have that. Uh, what other thing? First of all, yeah, we have two fans here and another, I would imagine, an exhaust fan right here. It is sort of way, yeah, it's mounted in the correct way. So that's an exhaust fan. And these are two intake fans right here. And that is because we actually have cooling with this, uh, well, case right here. As you can see, these are actual holes for the actual fans to pull in the air and uh, divert it inside the PC case right here. So here we have the workhorse that I mentioned, the B650 motherboard from MSI. Everything is pretty standard on this board. First of all and foremost, this, well, these are the two brackets that you are going to need uh, in order to install a CPU cooler, such as the one that I've mentioned before. Um, this is the AM4 cooler. And as you can see, these brackets right here, yeah, those brackets actually mount on top of these brackets right here. So that's pretty good to see from AMD that we still have support for older tech or I should say older hardware that is included with the support for the newer tech right here. Uh, cross compatible, so that's pretty nice to see. Anyway, four quad design here, I should say four DRAM support. So any sort of kit that you have with four sticks of RAM, they definitely go into this motherboard right here. And not only that, but I definitely do like that this motherboard actually supports 
dual NVMe uh, sockets right here so you can definitely go ahead and mount two types of NVMe drives one being in here and one being in the other slot right there um, yeah there is a sort of heat shield for it I find it more or less to be a design thing more than a performance thing but yeah definitely it is in there if you are going to need it you have dual PCI Express ports here so definitely you can use that this being the primary one so we're gonna use that with the GPU and well that's pretty much your basic I just say motherboard right so for the back of this motherboard right here as you can see it has quite a lot of things for its value first of all of course we're going to start with the cheapest things or i should say the lowest performing things which are these four ports these are usb uh, 2.0 and then you have four ports of usb 3.2 gen 2 you have a 2.5 gigabits lan out out of this uh, motherboard right here you have the wireless capabilities right here and you have a display port out which is a 1.4 display port and an hdmi uh, 2.1 which i can actually support up to 60 hertz of 4k content coming out of it so that's pretty nice to see you have your standard uh, well audio configuration right here and that's pretty much all that this motherboard has going for it to be something wrong here so guys as you can see new shirt new day because after much troubleshooting with the old motherboard i could not get it to work it was stuck on that uh, overprotection mechanism that it has basically telling me that there was some sort of short in its usb connector i actually sent back that motherboard and got a brand new one of the exact same specs from msi and i hope that this one actually works because everything that i did on that motherboard didn't actually seem to work so the first step into trying to troubleshoot the problem was actually to remove any sort of USB devices from the USB ports of the motherboard and of course that failed. It was only one keyboard anyway and I was really... <laughs> I was not really thinking that it's not going to fix the problem because I use that keyboard daily and I don't have a problem on my daily running machine. But anyway, I did it. It didn't work. So I had to move on next to the next step, which is to actually try and remove all the sort of USB headers from the motherboard that were connected to the front IO of the case. My thinking was that the case is pretty cheap. So since I cheaped out on that case, probably there was a problem with the headers themselves, probably shorting out and that causing the problem on the motherboard. But that didn't work either, so the next step was actually to try and remove the motherboard from the case, which I did, and I tried to boot it up on the bench here, I should say, on the box. That didn't work either, the thinking here was that maybe, probably, who knows, somehow the back of the motherboard was touching the back of the PC case and shorting out some of the components on the board that way, but of course that didn't work either. Next logical step was to actually try and reset the BIOS by removing the BIOS uh, battery on the motherboard there and holding down the power button for a few seconds just to try and uh, eliminate any sort of residual energy left in the caps. That didn't work either and then going after, uh, well, I, I went down online and searched a little bit about what ha was happening here and a lot of people said that, you know, updating the BIOS on these motherboards could actually help and solve the issue. So I did just that, went over to MSI, uh, to the MSI's website, downloaded the latest BIOS and went through the um, update of the BIOS itself on the motherboard and that didn't work either. So basically I was left with a dead on arrival motherboard that had to be swapped out before we can continue this video finally. And now that we have the new motherboard right here, we are going to pick up where we left off and finally install and finish this build. But first, but hey, hope it works, right? Let's get it tested. Oh, it works. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Oh, wow. That's why it's always a good idea to actually test out everything before installing them into your PC case. So this is the last piece of the puzzle right here. Some 20, I mean, I don't know, 2004 vibes kicking in right now. Uh, let's tighten in this screw as much as we can. There we go. That's all right. So basically this is how the PC looks. All right, so it's finally time to turn it on and see exactly how this guy right here behaves. I have high hopes, so yeah, let's turn it on. Come on, baby. Come on, graphics card. 
Come on, R9380, you can do it. You ancient piece of museum belonging GPU style whatever cranking power. <gasps> Device changed, okay, CMOS has been cleared. Yeah, that's definitely nice. Run setup. <gasps> it works, it works. We're in the BIOS. Basically, we don't have Windows installed on this machine. So yeah, without further ado, I'll just install Windows and see you guys once we are ready to roll some games. There we go, we have Hogwarts Legacy. Oh my god. Look at that CPU temperature. Okay, so at least it's dropping. Um, I was hoping that this cooler would do a bit better with this CPU, but apparently, uh, yeah, as soon as we're gonna crank up the game, something's gonna happen with that temperature. But okay, let's see, let's see. All right, so press any key to start. That's, uh, that's good, that's good. Okay, uh, what are the settings that we have here? I know this is notoriously bad for setting the resolution, so this game actually, I don't know, I don't know what's uh, what's happening with this game's um, design, but anyway, the resolution can't always be changed. I mean, you can change it if you, if you basically swap out or change the resolution in Windows, but we're running at 1440p right now. Uh, what do we have here? The upscaler is set to, let's say, to AMD, FSR2. Yeah, performance seems okay, I guess. Uh, the sharpness, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Uncap, V-Sync is off. Okay. Uh, what else? Medium. Okay, medium presets. All medium presets 1440p with this game right here. So, Hogwarts Legacy 1440p, all medium settings, and look at those FPS. We are running at 30 FPS with this GPU right here. That is absolutely amazing. In my books, I feel like everything is running smooth. I don't feel any lag. The game is running pretty cool and is definitely a playable experience. And for a four gigabytes card, that is definitely a huge win. I wasn't really expecting the level of performance that I see with Hogwarts Legacy, nonetheless, which isn't the most optimized title just yet on the market. And it is definitely a triple A game right now. Uh, and it is very demanding as well uh, if you are planning to run it on anything from a console to a PC but it is definitely doing its job. It's definitely keeping up um, its, you know, its playability with 1440p. So let's just go over the settings here quickly. Uh, as you can see, 1440p is the name of the game. Uh, we are running, uh, well, the upscaler mode is set to quality right here and everything off like, you know, V-Sync and stuff like that, frame rate, come on. I mean, it's a joke. Of course it's uncapped, we won't be bouncing around. Uh, very very high anyway uh, everything is set to medium as you can see so yeah this is what you can achieve with this GPU in 2023 playing a triple A game like Hogwarts Legacy with 1440p medium settings on an AM5 uh, chip uh, with DDR5 installed in there and I would say this is a big win for me anyway this was definitely the point of this PC build right here to go with a cheap GPU right out of the gate with uh, options to upgrade the GPU further down the line when you have the money for it and to actually keep your doors open when it comes to upgradability with uh, the new pots being unlocked for brand new CPUs, brand new RAM and stuff like that. So this is definitely what you get with this PC build right here. Another demanding title, uh, once again we have Red Dead Redemption 2 and oh my god this game feels quite playable as well. Uh, we are running at 1440p with the medium preset, which is in there, running Vulcan, and <laughs> I'm pretty impressed. Okay, it's not 30 FPS, it's it's more like 20 to 30 FPS, but uh, running at 1440p with uh, with this FPS, this is definitely something. Uh, I don't know, if I'm gonna just try and do something, I'm gonna go over to 1080p resolution and see if probably we can crank up the FPS like that because I personally, I am looking for at least 30 FPS when playing any sort of game. I mean, it is 2022 and you are trying to have yourself a decent $1,000 computer, right? So then uh, let's uh, change the presets here a bit. So as you can see, we were at 1440p here. Uh, a lot of this, uh, well, a lot of the settings are set to medium and high as well, occasionally. Uh, I'm just gonna, because, well, this is basically set here to quality level custom. Mm. No, I don't want a custom. I want it balanced. Uh, okay, there's different types of balanced in here. Anyway, uh, let's change the resolution to something more agreeable like 1080p. Apply changes. Yes, we will keep this as it is. And go back to the game now. 
some of the settings might actually have to be reset. Okay, so uh, we are now basically running Red Dead Redemption 2 at medium settings, 1080p with above 30 FPS. The game feels good, it doesn't lag, it's not stuttery. Uh, wow, okay. I'm actually quite impressed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is definitely playable. Uh, if you don't have a high-end monitor, uh, you won't really, I think, see that much difference between 1440p, honestly, and 1080p, running at medium settings anyways. So this is definitely one way to go with a $1,000 PC right now. If you are cash-strapped and you don't have the amount of money necessary to buy yourself a high-end GPU, and you can definitely do this at a later time while still taking advantage of a great CPU, great RAM configuration, and of course a NVMe drive, which is a must in 2023, and this game runs absolutely smooth. Uh, right now we're into some cinematic stuff in here, and as you can see, we are about 40 FPS or so, so this game definitely takes the cake, and you can play it on a 4 gigabytes card still in 2023. So guys, is it worth it in the end to actually build yourself a PC like this one I have right here with a 4 gigabytes card running in 2023? Well, judging by the performance of Hogwarts Legacy, which is a AAA game right now, and the fact that you are able to run it at 30 FPS or just a little bit over at 1440p with medium settings, that's pretty much a okay thing to do, and it is a pretty much uh, a very heavy lift for this 4 gigabytes card right there behind me. And not only that, but even uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 does have its optimization problem, and being able to run it at 1080p with around 30 or so FPS that's also a great thing to see so this is definitely in my books a way to go uh, forward on your pc building dreams and uh, it does keep the door open for upgradeability later down uh, in the future when you are having the amount of money required for you to upgrade whatever parts you want in there but from the get-go you get access to a great cpu you get access to great ram you get access to pci gen 4 and vme drives and I think overall all these things add up and uh, I would say that you get yourself a pretty fair good machine that only lacks in GPU power. Uh, so that's definitely addressable later on when you have the money and it's basically all up to you whatever budget you have to upgrade that GPU and you're only gonna get more performance from here. And regarding that little snafu I had with the motherboard, don't really worry about it. Uh, you shouldn't be having that sort of problem if you choose to go down this rabbit hole as I did because, well, these sort of things just happen. I mean, this is unrelated to all the problems with the X3D chips out there and the motherboards and the over voltage. This is basically a, you know, a low NTDP chip that hasn't had any sort of problems with the B650 platform. And this was just one thing that happened to me. You could call it a freak incident, but these sort of things do happen. So I do hope you learned something from, uh, from my problem, or I should say from my experience. But definitely whenever you're having some sort of problems with things like this, you are free to troubleshoot it as long as it's not very complicated. But if you can't figure it out, as long as it's a brand new item, you can just send it back to the, uh, well, to the store that you bought it from and get a brand new one back or send it through RMA. But if you are in the warranty period, uh, you can definitely send it for the RMA, but you might even have a window open where you are just able to send it back directly to the store and get a refund or a brand new product of similar specs like the one that you had. Guys, if you are here and watching this video until the end, then you're absolutely fantastic. I thank you so very much for taking your time and I do hope you learned something. And one more thing though, I do hope that you are going to hit me up in that comment section down below and tell me whatever I have done wrong or maybe you have ideas for builds that you would like to see here on the channel coming up next. So definitely do that. I'm scaring and answering each and every one like I always do. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one. Continue being awesome and build wisely. Cheers, guys.